Hello, I'm John Sewell, consultant with EdCon. Unlabeled equipment in the field can cause several problems. Some examples might include wasted time spent looking for equipment during condition-based maintenance routes, or even more serious problems like mistakes being made during lockout tagout. Today, I'm going to share some examples of how you can number and label your equipment and have safer, more reliable operations. Before we look at some specific examples, let's cover a few guiding principles. First, we want to use labeling materials that are going to stand up to whatever environmental conditions we're going to expect to encounter. This may be things like high temperatures, corrosive chemicals, or high pressure water like during washdowns, or even direct sunlight. Second, use consistent labeling methods and apply them in consistent locations. Standardizing your labeling will make missing labels more noticeable. Third, use multiple labels for large equipment. Some tanks, vessels, conveyors, and pipelines will span multiple floors or across areas of your plant. Make sure the equipment can be easily identified no matter what direction the equipment's approached from. The fourth principle is to inspect your labels on some frequency. Add a step to check your labels on a condition-based maintenance, routes, or operator rounds, and set the frequency based on how long you expect the labels to remain intact and legible. The fifth and last point is to label your equipment with the equipment number and name. Having just the equipment number or even a QR code on the equipment is a start, but a lot of confusion and unnecessary searching can be avoided by including the common name of the equipment directly on the label. For our first example, let's look at labeling and numbering on pumps, fans, and similar rotating equipment. Since individual components will be removed and replaced, label the foundation or the base plate. Stenciling the equipment number and name with a bright paint works well in many applications. Some rotating equipment's in contact with corrosive fluids, so you'll generally have to inspect the labeling on rotating equipment trains more often than other types of equipment. Also keep in mind that the piping and valves around rotating equipment are often a spot where operators and maintenance are working and they make good candidates for clear labeling. Tank mounted agitators are usually best labeled with good stickers or stenciling on the tank or chest that the agitator is mounted to. The frame may also be a good spot, but make sure the frames aren't removed during normal maintenance or you may quickly lose your labels. Conveyors often span multiple rooms or floors of a production area and the drive-in can be out of sight of the driven end. Conveyors are a class of equipment that you want to use more than one label on. Labeling the drive and driven end is a good idea. Also label the middle sections of the conveyor if they're separated from the ends so they can be easily identified no matter how you approach the equipment. For our next example, we can look at piping. Labeling the flow direction is a good practice. You can also label the material in the piping and perhaps where it is going. If your piping has its own equipment numbers, you'll want to include that. Otherwise, you may just use the equipment number for the nearest or next tank. Color coding by service is also an option that can work well with piping. If you choose to color code the entire pipeline, make sure you have a paint spec for each service and someone will need to manage that process closely. Large manual or automatic valves are often serialized and will probably have a tag or nameplate from the original equipment manufacturer. It's also useful to attach your own labels that indicate the equipment number and name of the valve. Clearly identifying valves is important for lockout, tagout, and day-to-day -day operation of the plant. Make sure the attached labels don't interfere with the operation of the valve, so labeling the piping adjacent to the valve is often your best bet. Vessels and tanks are another class of equipment where you want to consider the use of multiple labels. A large label over the manway or inspection door is useful, and you often find the manufacturer's nameplate here. Other labels placed on the back side of the tank or where it extends through multiple floors of a building will allow easy identification no matter what direction you approach the tank from. The three categories of best practices for equipment numbering and labeling are to make sure it's accurate, accessible, and applied. To have accurate information, make sure that all equipment that you've deemed necessary is labeled. For example, your standard may include the requirement to label all rotating equipment trains and tanks, but only piping in critical applications and valves over a certain size or in certain applications. To ensure the numbering and labeling is accessible, 
Use consistent numbering and labeling techniques and locations. Standardize on the types of labels that will be used and where they will be placed. Apply numbering and labeling standards to any new equipment. Update labels when changes are made to existing equipment and protect vendor nameplates during repainting. To help ensure the numbering and labeling standards are applied, check the equipment tags and labels as part of inspection routes on a regular frequency. I hope you found these examples beneficial. For more information on this topic and how equipment numbering and labeling fit into the technical database and support planning and scheduling, head over to our website, idcon.com. Also, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or leave a comment on the video. If you have a question, we'll be happy to follow up with you. Thank you. Thank you.